welcome to my fourth video in the series about muscles and today we're going to look at spatial summation and motor units. Um, so at the end of the last video we looked at some of the properties of the different types of muscle fibres and so the different types you have here are your type 1 or your slow twitch, type 2A um, which is your fast oxidative glycolytic and your type 2B which is your fast glycolytic type of fibres. Um, and so an interesting question is does your genetics have a role to play um, in the types of muscle fibres that you have when you're, um, when you're born? And does training affect um, any of the proportions of these types of muscle fibres? So if you think about it, if you look at some of the list of things that um, the type 1 muscle fibres have, and particularly look at some of the functional things here, so a high aerobic capacity, um, high fatigue resistance, um, that would make them better suited to longer distance endurance events. Um, and if you compare that to type 2A and type 2B, specifically the type 2B, those have a very low um, aerobic capacity, but very um, quick contractile speed and very high anaerobic capacity. And so those would be best suited for sprinting events, the 100 metres, weightlifting. Um, when you are born, your genetics determines the proportion of these muscle fibres. And so if you're born with a certain proportion of type 1, um, type 2A and type 2B, that's what you're born with. Um, there is one type of conversion that is possible. You can physically interchange these two. So if you're born with a certain amount of fast twitch fibres, you can interchange between these two types, so between type 2A and type 2B. Um, you cannot interchange between fast and slow twitch fibres. So if you're born with a proportion of slow twitch fibres, you can't then turn those into fast twitch. Likewise, you can't turn fast twitch into slow twitch. But like I said before, you can turn this one um, into um, these types of fibres. The way in which it works, when you train, effectively these types of fibres, the type 2B, actively convert into type 2A. Now obviously for a top line sprinter, um, that obviously isn't a very good thing. You don't want that to happen. Um, but training actually causes that change. It causes type 2B to convert into type 2A. Now, what happens over a period of time post the exercise, so after a week or several weeks, you actually get a conversion back from type 2A back to type 2B. So initially in the training, the type 2B converts to type 2A, and then after a period of rest, after a couple of weeks, it converts back from 2A um, to 2B. Um, it's why when you're doing the training um, you're not meant to train just prior to the event um, and so for an elite athlete like a sprinter you wouldn't want to be doing sets of heavy weights because um, that would convert a lot of the type 2b fibers into type 2a and so therefore during the race you'd have less explosive power and you possibly wouldn't be as quick so in the run-up to major events you'll find that um, athletes will taper down um, their activity and therefore they'll allow the conversion back from 2A to 2B. Now obviously this would this would indicate that to be a top line sprint you need fast twitch fibres and for long distance runners you'd need slow twitch. However the muscle proportion doesn't always guarantee um, success um, but it's a reasonable indicator. You would expect to find that the majority of athletes um, who are in the world's top 10 for the 100 metres you would expect them to have a higher proportion of fast twitch fibres and you would ex therefore you'd expect the top 10 marathon runners to have a high proportion of slow twitch fibres. Right, to a few, some key terms that you'll need to know, so a motor unit, a motor unit is its motor neuron and it's associated muscle fibres and so a motor unit can come in several types, it can be um, type 1, type 2A or type 2B. Um, the all or nothing law um, states that each muscle fibre within a motor unit either fully contracts or does not contract at all. So there's no um, half contraction and therefore it's referred to as the all or nothing law. So if the, if the neurons fires and therefore it causes the contraction of the muscle fibre, the muscle fibre will either contract fully or not. Um, there's no midway. Now that leads us to the idea of spatial summation. And spatial summation um, enables you to basically control the size of the contraction by doing one of two things either recruiting a different type of motor unit or by recruiting more motor units um, and so 
by the type that means, for instance, using the fast glycolytic or the type 2B if you want um, the size of the contraction to be large or to use type 1 if you want it to be small um, and the number of units involved involves basically if you want a bigger contraction you use more units. Um, a good way of thinking about this um, is putting in golf. So you'll only use motor units um, attached to the pectorals and the trapezes and what you don't want to do is you don't want to be using a hugely large contraction and so therefore you'd only um, utilise a few motor units and you'd probably select um, type 1 motor units in for that type of contraction whereas if you're looking at um, boxing and punching you're going to recruit a large number of motor units and you're going to try to select some of the largest ones as well so the type 2B motor units and this way you can control the size of the contraction and so um, not everything um, has the same um, size of the force generated so for instance the force generated through punching is much much greater than the force generated by you just lifting your arm and that's brought about by spatial summation